Call me Neoblade. This is tribute to Pick. PIG, the Australian pro gamer and caster. He make uh, he started a series called Pick Daily. And use cameras. I see a lot of player who doesn't use cameras, it's really important. Um, and the first thing you want to do is Worker Scout for I think 200 games, 300 games or 400 games. The first year of StarCraft in your life you want to do Drone Scouting or Worker Scouting. He explains this in his video as well and I'm doing a little bit of refresh because I've uh, found some good replays showing why drone scouting marker scouting is important. And the first thing you want to do is train a solid build order of course but even if you improvise your builds what I do not recommend but many people do it click on things click on those buildings of Protoss and find out is there a forge or is there no forge because a forge in the early game could mean cannon rush against you and we will see um, <coughs> we will see an example where I my worker scout is too late and the cannon rush is killing me the enemy is crushing your drones There are two famous people who do drone scout even in ZVZ. It's Root Cats and it's Gosu User. Gosu User was a pro gamer in 2013, and before that, oh, I, I assume too. But in 2013, he placed third at Dreamhack Valencia with names like Yan Zhedong Stardust and he placed third and won I think more than three thousand dollars. So the next thing you wanna do is always scout the front and you wanna get map vision. Oftentimes people ask me well he has two gas and two gates is an adept uh, attack incoming is this uh, oracles is this early robo or is this stargate in the lower leagues you should not care learning builds from your opponent because in the lower leagues you will see a lot of crazy stuff um, and I th assume even in Platinum there are sometimes or even most of the time solid build orders but really crisps and solid build orders are executed in Diamond and Masters and therefore you cannot, pr um, there cannot you cannot s see the future or prognose I don't know if that's a right word what will be incoming if you see two gas and two gates so basic stuff in scouting and the first the stage zero is drone scouting or worker scouting the next stage is map control and we'll see some examples of that map control and map vision of course a map control as Zurich is uh, not easy to do against six hellions but your opponent won't um, won't always open with six hellions and if it's only two hellions you can shut it down using roaches or zerklings I don't know if you know that you can see if you scout a stargate which unit is building you have to see this shadow within but that's not the most important thing there are two important things in this matchup, not in this matchup for scouting. 
you always have to take the watchtowers. If there are no watchtowers, you can just place a reaper, a stalker, a zealot on patrol, like this. I've seen a pro gamer, Grandmaster Terran, placing a reaper and a widow mine here, where the opponent has to move through. In most cases, in A-move cases, King Sejong Station is very good for Zerg because you can scout the front with an Overlord, but you can do so as easily as Protoss with an Observer, which is placed here. And Terran, all, of course, always can scan, can use a scan. And map control to quote pick and map vision is bloody difficult. So this is a build order powered by pick. It's uh, n not built as good as he execute this build, but this is something I would really recommend in the lower leagues, that you do a timing push. Do not go all in. This is very all inish because I only have 12 uh, drones at my at my natural. But in bronze and silver um, you could easily build some more drones or put eight drones here. But it's important that you attack your opponent between five and six minutes. So you can scout the front, you can see his unit composition and you can do a little bit of damage to his economy if you scout an early nexus. So, he has Void Trace, which is a good unit against my unit composition. And I cannot kill them because they move away when I do, um, when I do Corrosive Biles. But I scouted the front and I killed a lot of workers. So I strongly recommend you do some kind of attack in the, between the 5 and 6 minute mark. What you should do as well is try to use an overlord between 3 and 5 minutes use a scan or use an observer or adapts or scout the front with stalkers and afterwards you and this is the next stage you should try to scout for signs of greed and signs of aggression signs of greed is shown right here if our opponent is expanding a lot, this is a sign of greed. And you always want to see three signs of greed or three signs of aggression in the first 10 minutes of the game and try to analyze is there two signs of greed and one sign of aggression or three signs of aggression and one sign of greed so you can adjust your game plan, your build order for the first 10 minutes to the opponent. So this is a sign of greed. Two forages are a sign of greed. A robotic facility and two stargates are a sign of greed. because he does not produce anything out of the start gates is if this would produce double phoenix and he would have have eight gates or so then his production would be scary to me but since here's double forge only uh, take a look only three gates the fourth is incoming and two star gates which do nothing this, these are 
signs of greed. First sign of greed, forges. Second sign of greed. And third, the lack of a sign of aggression because there are not seven or eight warp gates. So I can take a fourth base and try to um, try to get ahead in one base like Zerg should do always. So we'll have parts where we explain signs of greed and signs of aggression on real ladder games. And there is my fourth base and my fifth base because my minimap vision is very very good. You can see it. I know this base. If he builds a base here I can see it but I should place an overlord more here because then I can see if he's mining here. Um, I have a ling outside of his base. This could easily be um, a zealot or a marine. If you're afraid to lose the zealot you can use a stalker as well. Um, now you can see my overlord is flying through. Protoss can use Protoss can use um, Hallucinated Phoenix, Observers, Terran can use a Liberator, Harass, or a Medivac, which is uncommon but it's uh, totally possible because it can boost through the base. He can use a scan of course. And something you want to do in with all three races is scout for expansions. This is one of the major steps with map vision you want to scout for additional bases. Because if he only has two bases and eight gates there's a big attack incoming in most cases. So I've seen two forges and there's an attack. Why is this attack a little bit surprising? Because here's no overlord. This is map dependent where you can place your overlords or your observers or reapers or hellions. A hellion is a very good unit to scout for hidden bases for a fourth or fifth expansion um, but it's also a good unit to set on patrol so you can see this area and if he moves through it a marine or a hellion will able to, to spot the enemy units. So my army value is a little bit higher. I'm a little bit ahead in upgrades. And I'm on 72 drones. So I'm in good shape in this replay. And since this is an elite Protoss AI, and since I scouted his next base and I see his army here while I because I scouted the front very important step to constantly scout the front I can kill this base back here because I know his army is mostly here so we'll just try to see this and I retreat because I want to attack Max. No, I am do not retreat because I can kill his army. Sorry for my mistake. And now I know he's dead and so I can close the game. This is of course just an AI but you will see similar assessments 
using the scouting informations in other games. The most important step in the first few games is worker scout and map vision. So we'll just return to the game, we'll go into my vision. You can see he cannot do drops against me because he would fly through overlords. My creep spread is okay and I would see attacks coming through the middle but we'll see for Zerg how important creep spread is on m maps which are very small um, but creep spread is important on every map in every matchup. Watch showers. I lost this watchtower, I don't know why. And overlord spread is here as well. Every race can do drops. Zerg will do link drops or banling drops into your economy, sometimes drops with roaches or lurkers. Protoss uses war prisms with adapts to kill your economy and an overlord is missing here but you should be able to get a good map vision with overlords and you will see other possibilities for Zerg and Protoss in the next in the next few parts of this video. Thanks very much, please bear with me and please subscribe to my channel. This is the first part. Worker Scout. Stage 0 of Scouting. And <coughs> this is a Gold League player. He's Terran, as you can see, of course. But his building, but his build order does not make much sense. Of course, if he takes two gas, he can easily build a starport. But he opened with two with two uh, depots and then flies his barracks there. Doesn't make sense at all. And you probably want to know why you should worker scout in the first place. You could say, well, I scout a base and it doesn't make sense what I see. I see two gas and then a fast expansion. I do not see a reaper, which costs gas. I see only a marine. I do not need two gas for one marine. For the factory I need gas, of course. But this build doesn't make too much sense. But if your worker scout would have come to this base, you would have seen, okay, no add-on to this barracks or even if it's in the air you can ask yourself okay he has a barracks in the air what the fuck but he does not have barracks near your bases and he has two gas which means these two gas does not pose an immediate threat to you because the gas itself cannot attack you it could only mean that he builds buildings and units, which uses gas, but these kinds of buildings take time. So an attack in the first two minutes is out of the question with this kind of build. He could send one marine to you right now, which should not pose any threat if you are choosing a solid build order. So, even if the scouting does not make sense to you, you should definitely do it because you can scout cheese. And I will show you in the next part of the game why you, why cheese is very dangerous for you. And the most players I know hate cheese 
and they hate losing to cheese. So we'll see us in the next part. This is the next part. We'll just take a short look at the cheese incoming and why I'm scouting too late. Since I'm Protoss 2 and or I play Protoss, my main race now is my main race now is um, Zerg. <coughs> we'll jump right into my vision and slow down here. I now see if I would watch my probe that here is no gate. I miss the building. I think when I would have scouted this gate building then it would be okay but when you scout a Protoss you have to click on the buildings and then I would have seen okay this gateway was just started so my gateway is nearly finished this means something fishy is going on proxy gates and I'm going to lose this game because I will build a nexus and I think he would have made a foregate afterwards but since I built a nexus there I don't have much minerals for building gates and building zealots so this is GG. Three zealots to 15 probes. He builds probes all the time. It was just a pressure. He wanted to expand after this I think and this really worked fine. See you in the next part. Welcome to the next part. Stage 0 worker scout and in this game I forgot about the worker scout or it's too late you wanna send out the worker scout when your first structure is about to finish your first supply structure overlord pylon or whatever because I would show it here the pylon is ready in my base This is another option. You do not scout the opponent's base, but you scout your own base. So there are no proxy buildings, proxy gates, proxy barracks inside your base. But what happens if he builds proxy gates here? You will not scout every inch, or if he build it here, you will not scout every inch of your own part of the map. So it's always safe to go to your opponent and see this early forge which means cannon rush incoming but since my worker scout is too late ready. the cannon rush is commencing as SCB you can see ready. in the production I might ready. even have the chance to shut it down because this is a pylon but since I did not scout, I say GG well played and leave the game. That's why an early worker scout is very important in the lower leagues. And listen to Pick, he tells you to do it until you are a diamond. Cheese and all ins are played throughout the leagues. This is a platinum MMR. And we'll first watch the opponent and the Terran the opponent of the Protoss and the Terran he sends two workers out and is immediately building two barracks 
with marines. It's mostly played with four barracks. And if there would be a worker scout, then the worker scout should arrive about 1 minute 10, 1 minute 30, depends on the rush distance, and he would see there are no buildings in this space, so he has to build his buildings somewhere else, which means early aggression, early cheese, and you have to prepare for this. But even if the worker scout comes a little bit too late, then you could see it as well. But right now the worker scout would be too late because you cannot come into the space anymore because there are three depots. So this wall is unusual, but if you're in a lower league and you scout this kind of war, do you really know that proxy wrecks are incoming? I doubt it. And it could be that he places his barracks here and here, or plays six wrecks or whatever. We'll go into the vision of the Zerg. And he plays an all in as well. And how you can identify this with a worker scout? Let's assume you get in the space um, at 1 minute and 20 seconds. The first, yeah, it's ready, so. Yeah, I think 1 minute 20 seconds is a good timing, a little plus 10 or minus 10 seconds. And the first sign, well, we'll wait for this. Let's assume you enter this space at exactly 1 minute and 20 seconds. The first sign of aggression is there is no natural. Most of the time the hatch will go down at 1 minute or 1 minute 10. Or even before the 1 minute mark, if it's hatch first. You see very few drones at the minerals. You see two gases. The timing is important. If you see two gases at the four minute mark, this is not unusual for Zerg. And you see a pool, which is totally common, and you see a roach warren beginning at one minute and 20 seconds. This means sign of aggression one, sign of aggression two, sign of aggression three, and you know cheese all in cheese or all in is incoming all in or cheese is incoming that's more easy to say so i hope you will listen to pick you will listen to me please do a worker scout in your f first few months of starcraft because if you lose to cheese Oftentimes player complaining, it's a great game, but I hate cheese, and I always die to cheese, and it's totally unfair that he's been able to build photon cannons in my base, or that he's able to build barracks in my base. This base is not large enough, but a barracks would, could be placed here. And to scout Zerg is probably the most the most difficult thing because you have to be able to see are there drones at his main base, are there drones at his natural 
and you have to count his drones, which I fi find very difficult to do. But these are some possibilities how you can scout cheese in the early game and why you should do a worker scout in the first few months until you hit diamond. Thanks very much. Please bear with me. Please subscribe to my channel and we'll see us in the next part of this video. Welcome to the next part. We'll talk about map vision and in this instant the lack of map vision. I um, love watchtowers. I try to always take the watchtowers. And there we see the forge. I did not click on it, which was a ma major mistake, but the worker scout is working and I see the forge now. But I should have clicked on it. So this probe is really bad. For me, it's dangerous. But since I have fought Cannon Rush for all my life, I put down three barracks. I should build additional SCVs because this Cannon Rush will be dealt with SCVs, not with Marines. My barracks won't finish in time. And now I will kill the probe. He will kill my SCV, but I kill his probe and he lost more than I did and there are two pylons which will fall as well. Since I know he will try to cannon rush again, I force him to go this way. I close the door here and I think there's a gap here, I don't know. We'll see. And we'll jump into my opponent vision and you will see he will try to cannon rush again. There are the cannons. But since he's not able to get into my base that early on, Command center upgrade complete. this cannon rush is Command shut down. Upgrade. Let's just fast forward. Again, I want to remind you, scouting the front is very, very important, and I do it now. I want to see he is able to build cannons, so he could protect early nexus with um, cannons. And he's building a nexus here. So I should not scout o only here, I should scout with a marine these two, three bases here. But I missed that and that's a lack of map vision. I could also place a, p a depot here and a depot he here. You will see an ex uh, example for that. But I scout the front. And there's the pylon, and I will just take another expansion. So I scout the front and I see he has not many units out, so I think my, my CC should be able to survive. And now I should kill this, ne uh, this nexus and I should cr try to kill this pylon and this mothership core. Very good. And what did I miss? I miss to scan between 3 to 5 minutes. We have the 6 minute mark. And yes, I know he has three bases, but I do not know about the Stargate. I do not know about his upgrades. 
And my money is way high, but this is about scouting. And you see I scout the front a lot, which accomplishes much, but my map vision is really poor. And we'll see now two examples where my map vision is not really poor, and now I see using my marines, okay, double stargate, void tray, okay, I need stim and upgrades as fast as possible to counter this army. I do a little bit of damage to his probes. And my map vision really is bad because he expands all over the place. We'll jump right into a replay where my map vision is better. This is cross position, therefore this watchtower is really, really important. SCV ready. SCV ready. Additional supply depots. SCV ready. SCV ready. So I scout the front. SCV ready. I do my worker scout. SCV I should ready. get my worker back. And in this game, my map vision is better. Command center upgrade I think complete. you can always improve your map vision. Complete. Your, the minimap has to blink like a Christmas tree, then you are able to improve your minimap vision. And I scout the front with a marine and see, okay, here's no expansion. This could mean complete. there is an all-in incoming. So I should build two bunkers. I built no bunker, major mistake. But if he's incoming with Medivex on with this flight route, I would see it. If he's incoming from this side, I would see it. And if he's coming from the middle, then I would see it too. Of course he just could leave like this and drop here, but nothing, I cannot afford to build 10 depots, so he's not able to leave a space without seeing, my, seeing it. And Terran can always build a sensor tower, which is able to scout drops very well. So, this technique with the depots you can do as Protoss as well, with pylons, and of course Zerg can place overlords there. Again, however you enable your minimap to blink like a Christmas tree, it's very important to do so. So a scout, okay, he has taken a second base. Again, this scout is a little bit too late. It should happen between three and five minutes. You will see um, a replay powered by Dark and Bian, where Dark scouts before the four minute mark. And there is a doom drop, and I see it. I stay there with my Marine, I try to see the tra trajectory and I think, okay, perhaps this guy does not watch the minimap as good as I do, even though my minimap vision is really crap, especially as Terran. Okay. My Terran mechanics are really bad. And he flies again and I just going to attack his stuff. These are the lost, and he loses everything. 
will jump right into his vision. Let's have a blast. It's a planetary fortress. Upgrade. Command center upgrade. Complete. SCV ready. And this is the first example how you can get map vision. So this is uh, again silver leak. My terrain mechanics are really bad. And again, I use the same technique. I take both watchtowers. I use depots to see the minimap. And I think we'll fast forward it because the oracle is incoming very late. I scout the front a lot. I hope it won't crash now. I apologize for the crash. I wanted to say I used the same technique using depots, getting the watchtowers and placing a marine there and I use scout the front all the time with a little push. I use the scan and I know this army will kill me but perhaps I can do a little bit of damage like getting a war prison, a war prison which cannot attack me if it's dead. But this replay is about map vision and I strongly recommend if your Protoss place pylons in this manner that you can see drops incoming. You can even place Upgrade. some here and some here. Map vision is very very important and as Pig said it's bloody hard. Mineral field depleted. And the oracle is coming very, very late, so it does not, it wouldn't even do any damage if I won't see it. My expansion timing is very bad. This is a bad scan because a marine could easily scout this location and that location. Um, I don't need to scout that location because if SCVs would mine here I would see them even if I could not see the SCVs I could click on the mineral field and see if they are mined. I have to check the video last time it crashed. So Command center upgrade. You see the watchtower is enabling me to see the complete attack here and I should position my troops here as a little precaution but okay Mineral field depleted. Ready to raise some SCV ready. Mineral field he retreats instantly and donates Arm for adepts and now he tried to do harass with an oracle and there it is. I should have seen it immediately but this depot enabled me to t see this oracle and let's assume these two or three turrets would not be here then I immediately should take some of my marines and put them into my economy. I react too late, but it's better to see the minimap and do not react than 
not reacting at all and not seeing the minimap at all and I can I took this marine and I should taken these four marines and he now attacks this marine instead of my SCVs and my turrets will do the rest. So this is a good example of minimap vision and if you're Protoss you place a pile in here, if you're Zerg you place overlords all over the map but we'll see uh, an example for, um, for Zerg as well in the next part. Please bear with me, please subscribe to my channel and we'll see this right away. This is the next part and it's for Zerg. This map is a small map and has no watchtowers but Zerg can always use an overlord here Protoss can, could use an observer here and scout the front all the time. Um, even if you're sure no aggression is coming you could place a mothership core here and scout the front. But that's... you have to really be sure he cannot kill you because your mothership core is needed at home. But Zerg, and this is for Zerg, should place overlords here and here overlords here like he does in here but the major part for Zerg is creep spread. This is totally awesome creep spread here and I try to deny a little bit of creep but you can see he sees everything of the map he should again place overlords here so he can see this area as well if a drop should leave my base here but this creep spread is totally awesome and you can see videos in my channel where Mamba is playing bigger maps like Orbital Shipyard where his creep spread is equally awesome. So that's for Zerg over spread overlords use creep spread to see attack. the complete map. Map vision is for Zerg crucial and very important. See you guys in the next part. Welcome to the next part. And again, we'll talk about minimap vision. You must construct additional pylons. Welcome to the next part. Again, we'll talk about map vision and in this case the lack of map vision will prevent the Zerg from scouting a big push. I hope you can hear my voice and I had problems with the microphone and in the next part we will analyze signs of aggression and signs of greed. You see in the worker scout you see three zealots scouting at the three minute mark, three minute thirty and Patcher sees no drones regarding the third the third. I don't know why the Zerg didn't build the third here because expanding towards your opponent is not a good thing but a sign of aggression is seen here. Zerg has no drones on his third base. So Petra should react with some cannons or some pylons at the front because there are more Zerglings incoming and he scouts that. But he doesn't react to this signs of aggression. You have left your probes undefended. Research. And there are the s slow Zerglings. And he has problems right now. 
not big problems, but he ignored a sign of aggression. And let's take a look. The opponent has a Roach Warren. No lair, no lair. These are all signs of aggression. No tech. No Evo Chambers, if I'm correct. Yeah. So, if he would have scouted the base properly, he could have seen no lair, first sign of aggression. No drones, third base, the biggest sign of aggression. And no double evolution chamber, third sign of aggression, which commences in this attack. It's not an all-in, um, but <coughs> Protoss lost way too much with this attack. And if speed would have been finished, this Ecoline would have been dead, I think. But now we'll jump into Evolution the complete. vision of the Zerg. Our forces have opened fire. The first problem is this is a good overlord and this is a good overlord. And um, he should place one overlord here as well. Probably here on this high ground. If a mothership core is here, then the pylon can be photon overcharged. But if the Zerg would like Dark, we would see a replay powered by Dark, um, where Dark has an early overlord speed. Then he could easily retreat. And he does not see this attack incoming. Why? Because the Ling in this area, or even this area, no, in this area there should be. Link. So if zealots are coming this way or other stuff coming this way, it will be killed. It's not a big advantage because, again, this base is too near to our opponent. But n right now he only sees the attack when um, the attack is in his base, which is way too late. But he has the Watchtower and he should place Overlords as well here and here, so he can see War Prisms flying towards his base. So he works on his Creep Spread. He builds spine crawlers so he can find a way to um, to get time if he's attacked there. And here are signs of greed. Triple evolution chamber is unusual, but it's definitely a sign of greed if he wants if the Zerg wants to build double uh, triple upgrades. This Hydra then is not a sign of aggression because he wants to build Roach Hydra. And he now has drones at his third base, so and he has 48 drones, so this is not a sign of greed. Our base is under attack. And again he should place a Ling here or an Overlord here so he can see attacks moving like this. And he should place an Overlord here or here on the high ground so he has vision on this area of the map. His Overlord spread could be better. But any minute now he will lose the watchtower. His overlord spread will not get better, will not improve. Now he has lost the watchtower and we see Patcher has taken the watchtowers. He does not scout the front, the Zerg. He does not scout for additional bases. Our base Our is under and 
there is a big attack incoming. We're losing a lot of drones. Again, the Ling was missing here. It's okay because the Protoss has lost more and he did not lose that many drones to this attack through lack of micro the um, Protoss could have easily sent four zealots into his economy and kill more drones Mutation complete. he builds three overseers And his creep spread is quite okay. But this is a smart move powered by Petra. He sends a small force attacking this base. No spine crawlers are here to um, buy time. And the Zerg immediately reacts with moving all of his army in this area. And again, here is no Ling. And this Ling would easily scout, okay, a big attack is incoming from the left-hand side. But this army will be out of position. So and this is what happens. This is intercepted. And this base is killed. We'll show this from the perspective of the Zerg. If he would have had the watchtower, he would have immediately see, okay, this is a small chunk of an army. And if he would have had an overlord here, I think this overlord would be very safe. And the Ling here, he would have immediately seen this army. And he should spend all his lava in units, but he does not build drones and does not build units. He does not need drones anymore, but he only builds upgrades and stuff. We'll see it Enemy from the... Out a creep tumor. Of course, this um, tumor. this replay, oh, this game is lost through the lack of macro skills, fun. because Petrus had an advantage in upgrades. Our base is under attack. And Our there is... Our forces have opened fire. And to lose this General many drones complete. is a problem. Not having a macro hatch and bad Nothing injects. Bad injects 200, 200 energy. 200 energy. No queen at all. Means the Zerg is dead. We cannot cope with this kind of an army. But if he would have had this watchtower, some of the macro hatches and some of the links, it would definitely help him to prevent attacks on this base. Well, this is it for this part. And I hope to see you guys in the next one.